Hello, welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me for the third part of this uh, little mini series. Uh, we've left it exactly as it is at the moment. This is going to be quite interesting um, because we don't have much time between reaching the cruise altitude and descending. So some things might happen quite quickly. Um, I'll try and explain as much as I can, as best as I can. Okay. So looking at this just now, this first green one you can't really see it. It's a top of climb, which is where we should reach our our uh, cruising altitude, which should be twenty seven thousand feet. However, um, yeah, it's uh, I've I've changed on the MCD to twenty five thousand. Um, I'll change it on the FMC once I unpause the simulator. Um, because we all have from this distance to here before we start descending. Okay, very short flight. So, a couple of things need to happen before this top of descent reaches us here. Uh, and it is basically changing altitude uh, and then setting the, the aircraft up for approach and landing. Okay, so. Uh, let's uh, unpause this and see if we can reset the uh, the FMC. This is as quite a good uh, way of showing you how to how to change this. Uh, let's see if this is going to work. So in our rev, first slash two five zero. Oops. Execute. Right, so there we go. So, top of climb, and you actually notice how top of descent has disappeared. So, if we look over here, it's actually moved because it now realizes we have a longer time. We've reached 25,000 feet. Um, so we have a longer time of being cruising at 25,000 feet before we descend. Okay, so that's worked out beautifully. Let's clear that. Okay, once we've reached this, and only once you have reached your cruise altitude, you want to change this altitude. Now this is where it becomes a little bit more complicated, so let me just pause this just now. Um, right, okay, so we need to go back to the Navigraph chart. Search for your airport that you're landing. For us, it's Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, which is uh, Manchester. We click on the Approach tab, okay, and we select a runway. So our runway is 25 right, and in the first video we talked about Cat 2 and Cat 3 ILS. Okay, so this is a chart, and this chart is would be used for. Um, airline pilots uh, and any pilot at all. It has so much information I, I'm trying not to overload you. The main points we need to take from this this here, this line here 3500 that is the minimum height we can be at until we get the ILS uh, on our instruments okay we cannot go below that until we get this ILS okay so we need to set our altitude to 3500 and treat that as a base altitude okay so let's do that just now now I'll actually do it. some things you can do with the simulation paused and other things you can't so we want to set that to 3500 which is a minimum level minimum height okay for that you need to set that only after you've reached your cruise altitude okay uh, now let's see that top of climb is there and if I can remember if I can actually zoom out yeah, that's interesting I can't actually see the top of descent now. Okay. We need to be at 22,300 for, um, for Ripno. 
normally, as you had seen, there was a TC and a TD. The TD is your top of descent, which is basically when you start descending for your approach, okay? So, once the TD, if we treat this here as TD instead of TC, TC is top of climb, TD is top of descent. As soon as TD reaches this inner circle here, on a zoomed in map, so if I zoom that in just now, once that reaches here, we have to press this button, Alt Int V. That's your altitude intervention. Basically, this this is this button tells your aircraft you need to start descending according to the FMC. Okay, it's not suddenly going to dive. It's not suddenly going to drop out the air, but it's going to start following this plan. Okay, so it knows. We zoom back out again. It knows Ripno here. We have to be at two thousand two hundred. Uh, sorry, twenty-two thousand three hundred feet. We're currently at twenty-five thousand feet, so that is two thousand seven hundred feet to lose. Um, and it's just over ten ten nautical miles. Or sorry, fifteen nautical miles out. Okay, so we'll treat this as a TD. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know why. I'm assuming because normally it's twenty-five thousand feet. This this particular flight would take, but for some reason it, the, our flight plan said 27,000. Um, we're not going to reach that. We're not going to reach 27,000, which is why it's kind of messed things up a little bit. Uh, but not to worry, I will do another video of a different flight to different uh, airport, and we'll run through the same thing again. It might be a bit quicker because hopefully you've watched the first couple of videos and might have the kind of an understanding of the basics for it. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to be condescending to anyone. Um, I'm just, I'm treating you like I, I was treating myself. Let's put it that way. Okay, so let's unpause now. So we have our altitude set, base altitude set. See the air, I know what's wrong, I know what's wrong. Um, Take off, cruise, flight level 250, see if this works or not. Okay, so by resetting the 2500, um, the aircraft now is like, okay, I need to descend. Now, we'll push this button, because that's what we would do normally. When TD reaches that, on a zoomed in uh, scale, the aircraft will start descending, okay? So, it's decided now, for whatever reason, that at Ripno, we're going to still be at 25,000 feet. We're then going to descend to 21,100 feet within 19 nautical miles, okay? Now the next thing to explain is when you hit INT, ALT, you hit that button, you hit this button here, the way I did, um, you will have this here appear, this reversed E, okay? The magenta diamond is basically where we should be just now. So it's climbing down, it's counting down because it thinks we're 3,000 uh, feet higher, or sorry, lower than we should be. So what's going to happen? This diagram is actually quite important when it comes to the FMC side of things. When this magenta diamond gets to this middle line, you should see the aircraft starting to descend. 
this middle line is the optimum. It's where the aircraft should be when it's descending. If it's where it is at the moment, which is up at the top bar, it means we are low in comparison to what the FMC is reading. If it's below, if it's at the bottom one here, we're too high. Okay. Now the aircraft will adjust itself accordingly uh, and it will do it through descending and through speed. Okay. So you can see how it's starting to descend at speed. Particular, that's not particularly what it should be doing because we're trying to maintain an altitude at the moment until this magenta diamond comes into the into the uh, into this scale into this range. So, what we should see when this these numbers disappear, it means we're yep. See, so the altitude it's now losing altitude because the magenta diamond is dropping to this line. The aircraft will now follow and make sure that magenta line stays in that middle um, line. Okay, you see that it's trying to keep the speed at what it should be according to the FMC. Okay, so again there we go, the diamond is just slightly above that line the aircraft's now descending. Okay, Hopefully that makes sense because that is a quite an important part. Right, why do I get a message up? Hmm, not sure why that was. Okay, right, so we have set our altitude, our base altitude that we've taken from the Navigraph chart for that airport, for that runway. The next thing we need to do is we need to tell the aircraft how high that runway is from sea level. Not every runway is sea level, okay? And there's a very easy way of, of finding that out, and that's from Navigraph. Right at the top here, we've got airport elevation and runway elevation. It's only the runway one we want. You can ignore this one. It doesn't matter. This is a runway one, okay? So it's 249 feet. Now, to tell the aircraft how high the landing is, we need to set this number here, okay? This only goes up in 50, blocks of 50, okay? So because it's 249, it's closer to 250, so we'll set the land altitude to 250. If the air airport elevator, sorry, the runway elevation, if it was 210, you would set this to 200. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of the, the altitude for the landing, okay? Right, we're descending, magenta diamond is beautifully in the middle of that scale, and we are just descending through 19,000. Uh, a little bit fast, but what we can do is we can set speed brake. We don't need to bring it full out, all we do is set it, um, and that's it ready to be activated if need be. Okay. Following the FMC, so at Lakey, which is 25.8 nautical miles away, we need to be at a flight level of 10,200 feet. Okay, so the aircraft following this line should reach that altitude just as we reach Lakey. If it's slightly before Lakey, it will level off to that uh, height. Uh, if it's slightly higher than that height, by the time we get to Lakey, then it'll try and descend quicker, just to try and match that, okay? So this really is, the FMC is flying this aircraft. All we are doing is setting up the aircraft for the information it needs to be able to get us set for landing straight onto the runway, okay? We will land it manually, but this is it. This is us how to set it up, okay? So... Just to recap, we've set the altitude, the base altitude we can fly at until we get ILS uh, notification. We have set on the overhead panel the height of the runway. Um, let me just flick some lights on now. We're going to be heading to um, below 10,000 feet. Right, the next thing we need to do is we need to know what 
the frequency that ILS is on. And frequ every every airport is a different frequency. Frequency we want to worry about is this ILS DME. Okay, this is what we need to program into the aircraft to let it know um, what it's uh, what it's looking for, basically. So if we went to Echo Golf, Foxtrot. And um, we go to runway 23. So the ILS we would need to program is this one, 110.1. Okay. Just to give you an example. So that uh, hopefully you're able to see what, what I'm trying to get across. So 25 right, ILS. So our ILS 109.50. Okay, so let's move that out the road. We will find this down next to the throttles and it's actually programmed in already okay something to bear in mind is I thought without really looking at active and standby I thought that number and this number here meant the same thing but that's a standby so the active ILS frequency is on the left hand side under active it sounds it sounds so obvious but for me that was one of my pitfalls so 109.50, all we would do to program that is, let's put that there just now, so let's see, we want 109.5, okay, so big knob to get the 109, little knob for the 0.5, okay, just hit that button, that then puts it into active, okay, so as long as they are both the same, for the runway, that's ILS setup. Okay. The very last thing we need to do is we need to tell the aircraft what the altitude is in terms of the barometer. Okay. And this is where the third website comes in. Third website is METAR, and I showed you that in my first video. A lot of information here. The only information you need to worry about is the pressure. You can have that set either in HG or in inches. I always have it set in HG. All you need to do is click change units, select inches, save preferences and then it comes up. No it doesn't. Try that again. Yeah. So Pressure is 1012 HPA. You can set that the way you want it. I always have it in inches. So the pressure is 29.88. Okay. We need to set that in the aircraft. So how we do it? This STD, which sounds horrible, um, is on standard altimeter setting just now. We need to use this. Um, knob here to go to 29.88 and you'll see it's in white at the moment that it's not active so you put in a what you put in the figure but it's not active you need to press this STD button to make that active okay if it's in white it's not active is that in green it is active we now need to do the same with the same figure for this one again 29.88, you do not need to press any other buttons. As long as it's showed in green, it's all set. And unfortunately, you need to set it again for the third time on the first officer's side. 29.88, and press STD, and there we go. And you see how that changed the uh, altimeter slightly? Um, and again, we have obviously reached 9000. So the aircraft is leveled off. It's just getting its speed back up. And it's going to level off there until it's ready for the next uh, drop. Okay. Now if I zoom out on this one. This is quite zoomed out. It's quite messy. So let me switch off uh, that and the airport. Yeah, it makes it a little bit clearer. So it's train off. So we're going to follow this line. We're going to go left. Now in the first video we set FMC up. I said this 90 degree turn would never be made in an aircraft. It always has to be curves, okay? 
it's is what it is. I think it's quite a, an intricate programming thing to try and do it. So um, we will manually make a curve, and I'll show you the easiest way I've found to do it. Um, and it'll be in a little while. It's not going to be right now. Okay. So to recap again, altitude base altitude for ILS for Manchester. We have set the ILS active on both sides of the pedestal here to the ILS frequency and we have set the altimeter to what the METAR information is, okay? FMC, we need to add, tell it what the final um, our final setting for flaps will be, okay? So let me go to init ref click on the bottom left button for index click on approach and you'll see flap speed now it's got here the references we're going to go for flap 30 degrees for slash at a speed of 146 we're going to input that there the aircraft now knows that that's what I want to be sitting at when I land you'll also notice that ILS 1.109.50 has is in automatically I didn't put that in it's done it itself because we selected the runway on the first the first video of the FMC okay the first video really is about setting everything up second video is about a couple of little bits to do and uh, the third video is obviously this one which is the um, setting up for top of descent approach and landing okay now we've got a little bit to go this is going to be a longer video as i said earlier i think it would be too disjointed to cut this video as we're approaching um, so we'll just we'll go with it okay um for it we can go back to legs on here and we can just have a look we don't have that that long before we're going to be coming to this 90 degree turn. Now I'll explain how I'm going to do this prior to it because it comes quite quickly. This 90 degree turn is nasty and it, it wouldn't happen. So you'll notice there are two stars here, okay? There's the C123R, which is this very end one here on this point. There's another one, F123R, which is the second star. When we get closer to this, I'm going to delete the corner star, which means the FMC will automatically move to the next star, which means we'll end up with a curve going from this line to this line, okay? Um, but we need to do it when it's a lot closer to us. There's no point in us trying to do it just now, okay, um, for it. So we'll keep an eye on it. How we're going to do it is any of these stars here, if you press it, it'll go into the, the copy button. So remember the first first video, anything you enter will show up on this bottom line. Okay? When we get closer to this 90 degree turn, I'm going to press this button, which means F123 Romeo moves onto this line which means technically all we're doing is deleting that star once i've done that you'll see the yellow light come back up here and i'll hit execute which basically means i'm telling the aircraft that star is now gone your next star is a foxtrot 123 romeo it'll then should have a curve to come on to the final approach for the runway um, i wanted to explain that just now because when it happens it'll be quite quick um, and i'd rather have it ready for you just now. Um, so we are roughly sitting at 9,100 feet because this next star we're reaching that's what it wants us to be at. Okay, 250B is your base. It needs to be below, sorry not base, it needs to be below 250 knots and you'll see that we've got a setting of 240. What I find about this aircraft is the speed it drops the thrust so much that it loses speed it then has to push thrust in to get to where it is so the thrust levers are constantly moving back and forward but instead of being a steady uh, state which is a little bit disconcerting if you're new to this because you're like i've done something wrong that these thrust levers 
are moving constantly. No, you're not. You haven't done anything wrong. This is how it, this is how this aircraft is flying in this sim. Okay, I'm not saying this is how it is in real life. I dare say it's not because it would be quite a bumpy um, flight if you're constantly, you know, thrust is on, thrust is off, thrust is on. Um, so yeah, I I I think uh, you. This this simulation will never be perfect to what the, aircraft, what the actual aircraft is. It, it never will. It doesn't matter who's programming it. This aircraft, this mod is amazing, and I'm not the only person saying it. And I I'm not affiliated with them. I am in no way, shape, and form. They don't even know who I am. Uh, I'm just a lonely uh, content creator streamer who just loves the work. So, yeah. Uh, it is what it is. So, we are uh, currently trying to kind of level off at the moment. Again, our speed's dropping, so I'm going to remove the speed brake. Speed brake is this lever here, okay, and if I move over, you can see what it says on it, okay. Uh, so, armed, sorry, it's uh, down, armed, flight, detent, okay. Um, once we get closer, we'll be have it armed, and hopefully, if we can have a successful landing, and let me put this out here now, any landing you walk away from is a successful landing. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a bit of a per perfectionist and want to land the way a, an airline pilot who's been flying for 20 years has done. It's never going to happen. So, um, yeah, any landing at all that you walk away from the aircraft in one piece is a uh, it's a successful landing. Um, yeah, so when the speed brake is armed, as soon as you touch down, I'll show you a replay of the landing and you should see the speed brake automatically coming up as soon as we touch ground um, because it's armed, okay? Uh, there's no point in arming it just now, there's no point in putting flaps out just now because as you can see, uh, the speed's just dropped again down to about 2.30 two maybe. Um, once we reach about 200 knots, I'll then start activating flaps. And I'm also going to put this out here just now because of my own experience of it. This mod is updated so often uh, on an almost daily basis, it's amazing. If you have an issue with this mod, i.e. something's not working, it is because of a user error. It is not because of the mod. My experience, because I used to, about 2.20, start putting flaps out, the flap would stick and then the aircraft would constantly bank to one side and become unflyable. That was my error, not the aircraft, not the mod, okay? Uh, I see it so often in the community Facebook page, you know, oh, this isn't working, this isn't working. Well, uninstall the aircraft, i.e. delete the files, do it again, it's free, you can download it as many times as you want, Updated to the latest one, and the majority of the time people find it actually works. So, I want to put that out there because there's so much negativity going on on the internet. There's so many keyboard warriors who think that they know better and they know what they're doing. Uh, let's go for a little outside view. There we go, there's our aircraft. Flying into cloud. Now, we can also look at if you want, just for realism. We can look at the METAR forecast. So visibility is 10 kilometers or more. There's a few clouds at 3,800. Now we are baseline of base level of 3,500, so we should be underneath the cloud and showers in vicinity. So that that isn't too bad. We've got a nine knot wind to the west. Fr sorry, from the west. Um, that I don't see that that's going to be too much of an issue for it. So. I've zoomed out because we're getting ready to um, delete one of the stars. What I'm going to do is put the speed auto brake onto two. Uh, put that on. Really should have done the seat belt signs and things like that, but I'm not. This isn't a, a realism flight. This is just a um, more a, a how to use it flight. I moved the gear, this is a gear lever, 
as soon as you're, you've taken off and your flaps are completely retracted you can move that from up to off it just releases the pressure within the system rather than the pressure keeping the, the landing gear up constantly um, switching it off just means that they're, at, they're locked anyway um, and they are the, the, the pressure in the, the hydraulics has been released that's all it is again that's a by the back that isn't going to affect the flying um, it's just something that I've as I say, I've picked up as well. So we're we're descending at the moment, six thousand five hundred feet. Uh, we are at the moment. You can obviously see there was a little gap in the clouds there. Um, so we should get a good view of the the runway. The runway has four lights to the side of it. I don't know if it's always to one side, a certain side, or not. The ideal position you want those lights to be is two red, two white or two white, two red, it doesn't matter, but two of each. If, you're, if you've got four white, you're too high. If you've got four red, you're too low. Two white, two red means you're on the ideal glide path for coming into that runway. Um, hopefully, I flew this flight earlier on just to make sure this is working properly. And uh, it, uh, you could see for miles, you could see the red and white, so it was ideal. Um, right, so we're sitting, we're coming up to this star. As I say, I've selected the I've selected that button to give me in my my copy line there the F one two three Romeo uh, drag is required. So I'll put the speed brake out just now. You should see that descending. So I can actually now put out the the flaps. But we'll deal with this first. Okay, so we want to get rid of this star just round about after the this line, which should give us a nice arc towards this Foxtrot 123 Romeo. Okay. This is where it all goes horribly wrong. Hopefully not. So there we go, and uh, if we press that, execute. Okay, I probably should have left it so it was a bit closer to, to me, but we have a bit more of an arc on that magenta line now, which is what that's we want. Um, so that's us now turning towards the, uh, the runway. Now, we have a line here, we have, sorry, we have a diamond here and a diamond here. Those are the ILS. Um, markers. So because we see them we can press VR lock which basically means we have that on our instrument which means we are not far off of the runway. This one tells us our height and as you can see the aircraft's trying to track that height so we can hit approach and what we'll do is we'll bring down that press that because we want uh, we basically want to set it up as if it's going to be an automatic landing so it's um, yeah I've just brought out the flaps just now 25. okay so we're 2500 it's a horrible day out there but I don't know if we can see that or not I can't even get it into focus there's the two red two white at the side of the runway. Okay, there is a runway roughly. So, because I pressed VOR lock, because this horizontal diamond came into view, I then pressed APP, because this horiz horizontal diamond came in. I don't know if you need to do it in a particular order. I just know that um, I press VOR lock first for horizontal approach for the, ver for the vertical. I've now brought down the um, I brought down the landing gear. I've also manually changed the speed because I don't want to be coming at 200 knots. It's way too fast. Okay, so there we go. Flashing to say we're on par. We're on. We're ready to go. This 1280 is your actual height from the ground. Remember. 250 was the height of the runway so 
we're now about a thousand, coming up to a thousand. I'm going to disconnect the autopilot and I'm going to uh, try and land this manually. So it's uh, because I was trying to. Uh, yeah, no, it is. Okay, calm down. So there we go. It looks like we've got three white and one red. We're now uh, four white, which means we're too high. So all I'm doing for my height is I'm reducing power to bring the aircraft down while keeping. I don't know why it's giving me a terrain. So this is going to be a bit of a landing in the middle of the, the runway rather than... Yeah, I may actually run out of runway here. Okay, reverse thrusters on and again I don't have rudder pedals so 80 knots. I was, was pretty much the end of the runway there. There was my exit. Okay, I'll come out here and turn right. That wasn't a great landing, uh, and I'm going to tell you why. I came in when I disconnected autopilot the plane was obviously trying to reduce speed but at the same time ended up um, dropping like a stone because I wasn't quick enough disengaging autopilot and the auto throttle. When you come into land you want the nose to be level or slightly up as, in a, as if it looks like it's climbing um, and you use your throttle to if you're too low Put throttle in, add thrust, it'll bring the aircraft back up to the glide slope. If you're too high, you then reduce the throttle and keep the nose up, and the aircraft will then glide down back onto the path, the glide path. So I did I did say there wouldn't it wouldn't be a pretty landing. Um, I don't have rudder pedals. Um, it's uh, it's not easy trying to do it with the button and the joystick. So let me switch all this off and let's have a look at the aircraft is still in one piece let's uh, retract the flaps and we shall have a look at the uh, last part of that landing so this is where I disengaged the autopilot the auto thrust apologies my microphone is going crazy for some reason okay sorry my microphone went crazy there this is where I've disengaged autopilot. I don't have enough flap out, which is why I got the warning of the flaps. See how exactly there it dropped like a stone. I should have been on the joystick, keep the nose up. So I've now had to climb because I'm too low, which has then put me too high. See how we have the four white? I'm too high coming in. I should have been a lot lower than that. Um, you can see that I'm coming in at a, an angle because we're getting a slight crosswind. You can quite clearly see. If this was a real flight, you would have went, you'd, you wouldn't even have landed. You would have went around. Um, however, 
as I say, this isn't about me trying to to land aircraft. This is me just trying to show you a start and finish of a a flight being planned and flown. I'm obviously dropping really quickly. I'm trying to correct the fact that I'm not straight onto the runway and gliding down. Actually, that isn't. That's quite a good landing. And there's the speed brakes coming out automatically. Hard on the nose wheel, which wouldn't happen. Trying to uh, doesn't even look like the rudder is working there. And my reverse thrusters are on. So let's have another look at it. This time we'll look to see how level it is. Coming in far too too fast. See how I'm having to flare the aircraft. Like I say, any landing that um, you walk away from So one last look, just from inside the cockpit. So you can see the yoke, the kind of pressure, constant movement I'm having to do. Me trying to correct it back on line with the runway. So I came down really fast because a 50, 40, 30 was quite quick. It shouldn't be that quick because obviously I'm not on the glide slope. Um, but I am actually quite pleased with that landing. I'm because the air brakes are out so quickly, the nose wheel comes down. comes down a little bit hard, um, as you see in a second. No, it's actually not too bad. Yeah, so it's that is that. That is the basic. That is an entire flight from programming the FMC, setting the aircraft up, take off, cruise, set the aircraft up for landing, uh, descent, approach, and landing. Okay, like I said, I am a complete amateur novice at this. Um. But I wanted to do some kind of tutorial that would have helped me when I was starting out with this. 15 to 20 hours um, of researching, watching, reading. It's not fun when you want to pick the simulation up and fly. And I, I could have done it with a small aircraft, but that's not, that's not what I want. I want airlines. So, if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. Um, if you like the channel, please do hit that subscribe button. Apologies about the microphone. Um, I'll need to have a look at that and see what's going on with it. Um, yeah, constructive criticism, as I've said previously, I'm more than happy with. Uh, thoughtless nonsense negativity. Go elsewhere and do it. Don't do it my channel. Um, okay, I will do another one. Um, to a different destination, a different uh, start as well, and uh, we'll see how we go on. Until then, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.